Hey teachers! So if you have checked out my channel before, you have probably seen that I love using Google Slides. It is one of my favorite virtual teaching tools and we've got lots of videos on this channel about creating interactive worksheets in Google Slides and Google Slides extensions and resizing Google Slides, all kinds of things that you can think of. But one thing that we have not covered that I've actually been getting a lot of questions about is how do you create drag and drop activities inside of Google Slides? And that's actually super easy to do. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to create three different types of drag and drop activities inside of Google Slides. Now you may be wondering, why should I be using drag and drop activities with my students? And there's a lot of great reasons for it. Uh, number one, it's a great way to get your students practicing with TEI or technology enhanced items. Nothing is more frustrating than having your students take their standardized test at the end of the year and they know the content, but then they get the question wrong because they don't know how to manipulate a technology enhanced item. So this will help give them lots of practice with that. It's also a way to assess different types of thinking skills such as sorting, labeling, classifying things. And last but not least, it's fun. Students tend to really enjoy drag and drop activities. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to create three different types of drag and drop activities. We're gonna look at how to create a labeling activity, a sorting activity, and then a fill in the blank activity. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create the background for each of these activities because when you have a drag and drop activity inside of Google Slides, you want the students to be able to drag the parts that they are manipulating and interacting with, but you do not want them to be able to drag anything in the background. We have to lock all of that down. So we're going to create the backgrounds first for each of the slides, and then we will add the drag and drop elements last. So what I actually like to do when creating the backgrounds is I like to start inside of PowerPoint. Um, I find PowerPoint just to be a lot easier to use. It also gives you a lot more font options. And then I will show you how to convert those backgrounds that you create inside of PowerPoint into your Google Slides. It's going, you may think this is gonna be complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. So let's jump on my computer and I'll show you how to create your backgrounds. Okay, so here we are inside of PowerPoint and I'm gonna create the backgrounds for three different drag and drop activities. The first one I am going to do is going to be a labeling activity where students label the, a map of the United States. So the first thing I can consider doing is, do I want to give this a color background? I can keep it white if I want to. Um, do I want to use a digital paper? If you wanna add some kind of background to your slide, just click design and format background. I'm just gonna pick a color to use. And if you use just a color, remember to keep it a lighter color so your text shows up. You can also click on picture or texture field and upload those digital papers or images from your computer to set as a background. Now I want to find the map that my students are going to label. So I'm just gonna go to Google and I've already searched for some black line United States maps and I found one that I liked. So I'm just gonna copy it and I'm going to paste it into my presentation. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because students are actually going to drag and drop words or labels over here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I wanna leave room so I can put my instructions at the top and then I'll do a word bank over here that students will drag and drop. Now, let's say I don't want what's behind the United States to be this blue color also. I could add a box behind it by inserting a shape like this and make it white. I'm gonna give it a thick outline just to make it look nice. And then I'm just gonna send it backwards. So I can do that um, if I want it to be white behind my map. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add in another box over here. 
so that I can put, when I move this over to Google Slides, I'm gonna make this my word bank. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the box that I just made to keep everything consistent. And then I'll just make it a little bit smaller. So after we move this into Google Slides, I'm gonna put the words that students will drag and drop right here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to add some instructions to the top of the slide so that students know what to do. So I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to say drag and drop the names to the correct places on the map. And after I've got my text there, then I can make it a little bit bigger and easier for students to read. I can also change the font to something else if I want. So that looks pretty good. All right, so the background for my labeling activity is ready. You can see that was really easy to do. And like I said, we'll move this over to slides in a second and make it interactive. So now I'm going to make the background for my next activity which is going to be a sorting activity. And you can see I just clicked on new slide and added a blank one in here. So I'm going to make this one, let's give this one a green background. And for this, I'm going to have students sort numbers into three different columns to practice uh, multiplying. So I'm going to insert a table here. It's gonna be a three column table and I am going to adjust it to look the way that I want it to look by just playing with the borders and the shading. I'm gonna make the, let's see, I'm gonna make the border a little bit thicker. There we go. And then I'm gonna have it fill a little bit more of the screen. I'm gonna leave some space at the bottom because once again, I'm gonna put a word bank down there and I'm just gonna play with this table until I get it the way that I want it. All right, now I'm gonna give the headings for my table. And you can use any fonts that you have saved on your computer. So if I wanna use one of these really fun ones that I have saved, let me find one that's fun. So if I wanna use like a fun font that I've downloaded, I can do that. So we'll say less than 10 um, equal, to 10 and then greater than 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list some multiplication facts down at the bottom in the word bank and students are going to drag and drop each multiplication fact to the correct uh, category. So then once again, I'm just going to add some instructions to the top of the slide to keep it easy so that I don't have to reformat again. I'm just gonna copy and paste my instructions from the first slide to this next one here. I'm going to say drag and drop the multiplication facts to the correct category. And it's also up to you. I can go ahead and put a white box down here to act as the word bank, or if I just wanna leave it empty down here and I can add some things in, I'm gonna do that as well. Now, very quickly, we're gonna speed up the footage just a second. I'm gonna create a second slide very similar to this one, and I'm gonna show you how to do another type of drag and drop activity that uses images instead of words. So we're gonna speed up, and I'm basically gonna create something very similar. Okay, and now we are going to create my very last slide, which is going to be a fill in the blank activity. So I'm gonna add another blank slide. Let's see, I'm gonna make this one, let's do kind of an orangey color, just something that we haven't used yet. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I am going to have students drag and drop numbers to a blank space. So I'm gonna add some boxes first, and these are going to separate each of the problems. And I'm gonna have students practice comparing and contrasting decimals with this. So I'm gonna insert a text box, and let's see, I'm gonna make the font a little more fun, make it a little bigger, and I'm gonna do a few decimal problems. 
Now one thing when you're creating drag and drop where they're gonna fill in a blank is make sure you give them enough space to fill in the blank where when they drag it's not gonna be overlapping other things. Okay, so I'm gonna have these two and then I will add the draggable elements and in a second I just need to add some instructions. So I'm going to do that right here and make it a little bit bigger. And for this, they're going to drag and drop the number to the blank space. And I'm gonna have a second component to this where then they are going to use um, money to model the amount in the space. And once again, I can change this font to match what I have on some of the other slides. Okay. So now these backgrounds are ready and we are going to move them into Google Slides. Okay, so we've got our backgrounds created. Uh, we did that in PowerPoint and now we have saved them as images, either a JPEG or a PNG. Now we're going to move them over to Google Slides. Okay, so to move these into Google Slides, the first thing we need to do is save them as images. So you can either save them as a JPEG or a PNG on your computer. I'm just gonna save them on my desktop in a folder. Okay, I've saved all of these as JPEGs, so now I'm going to go over to Google Slides, and I want to upload each of these as a background because if I upload them as a regular image, students are going to be able to drag them. So to do that, I'm gonna click slide and then click on change background and I'm going to find one of the images that I just saved to my computer. Okay, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this for each slide. Okay, so I've just moved very quickly through the process of how to create your background in PowerPoint and then move it into Google Slides. And we actually have a whole nother video here on our channel called How to Create Interactive Worksheets and Google Slides. And in that video, I go a whole lot slower, step-by-step, -step, through how to take something from PowerPoint to Google Slides. I also share some extensions and quick tips that you can use to speed up that process. So I definitely recommend that you go back and check out that video. It's actually linked in the description for this video so that you can easily find it, but it will definitely provide a much slower version of what I've just showed you. And then, like I said, some time saving tricks that you can use. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead back into Google slides and I'm going to show you how to create those draggable elements that your students will be able to interact with. Okay. So let's look at the first one now, and we are going to put in, a list of states that they are going to drag and drop. So to do that, I'm just going to click text box and you can format these text boxes however you want to. We're actually probably going to need to make them kind of small because they're going to have to be able to fit over the states. So let's go ahead. I want to center these. Let's say Washington. And if the word is not fitting in the box size that you need, just make the font a little bit smaller and you can kind of play with these, get them exactly how you want them. Sometimes it can also be helpful just so students can see what they're dragging is to give the box a background color. So I can do this. It kind of matches the slide. And then when students drag it, it's a little bit easier for them to see what they're dragging. And it's also uh, a little bit easier for you to be able to see what they've done. And you, like I said, you can play with the fonts, get everything exactly how you want it. But basically we'll just do this for however many states that we need. Okay, I've got five states there. I could continue adding as many states as I want, but you guys get the idea. That is what you're going to do. And then this will be a bank that students can drag and drop over to the image. Now I also want to show you, see how we saved this as a background image? I can't actually drag and drop anything on this slide except for the interactive elements that I just added. All right, let's go to the next one. This is going to be your sorting into categories. So I'm going to put a bunch of multiplication facts down here at the bottom and then students will drag and drop those. And I'm going to do that the same way by adding a text box. I'm going to center it, make it a little bit smaller and I'll just play with that until I get it the way that I want it. And then I'm going to put a bunch of multiplication facts down here.
Once again, I've got five facts here and I would just continue doing this, but once again, everything's locked down except for these, which students are going to drag to each of the categories. Now this next one here is similar, but I wanted to show you that you can also create shapes that students can drag. So let's say I want students to sort triangles and quadrilaterals. I can use the shapes tool and I can create shapes for the students to drag. And I can make these all different colors and I can add as many shapes as I want here. All right, so there you can see for this activity, students would drag shapes to the different columns instead of dragging words. And that was very, very easy to do. All right, let's go on to the last one. And this one is actually going to have two parts to it. First, I'm going to create numbers that students are going to drag and drop to the lines. And then I'm going to add in some clip art that students will be able to drag and drop to create models. So the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to add in the numbers for the drag and drop to the line. So I'm going to use a text box again and I am going, I'm actually going to do it on the line so that way I can see what the answers are going to look like when students actually drag and drop them. So I can make this a little bit bigger so that way it matches more with what's over here. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna create, actually I'm gonna give them a white background to make them stand out. And then I'm gonna create two more for students to choose from. And then I'll create one distractor as well. Okay, and then the next thing I have students doing is using money to model the underlying numbers. So they're going to want to show what $14.20 looks like. So I need to give them money that they can drag and drop. And I actually have clip art that I can bring in. So I'm going to upload an image from the computer and I'm just going to upload each of the images of money that I have. So we're gonna speed this up to go a little bit quicker, but just know that you are uploading images from your computer. Okay, so I have all the bills and coins available that students are going to be able to use for this activity, but I just have one of each, and they're probably gonna need more than one of some of these. So anytime I want students to be able to drag and drop multiples of the same one, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this image, and then I'm gonna paste a new one, and then I'm going to layer them. I can do as many as I want, but I'm just going to layer them on top of each other, so now you can see if students drag and drop this over here, there's still a pile for them to use. And so I am going to do that with each of these to make sure there are several for students to choose from. Now, these are the different drag and drop activities. The one thing that I do wanna show you before we wrap this video up is when students complete a drag and drop activity, they must do it in the editing version of the slide like we see it right now. If you go over to present, Nothing's draggable, it's just a presentation. So students will work on it just like this. Now, if you're not sure about how to share uh, this presentation once you have it made, make sure to check out our video that's linked in the description about the right way to share Google Slides because this will allow you to share it with each of your students, but it will make it so that when one student drags and drops something, it doesn't change all the other slides as well. So make sure to check out that video that's linked in the description too. All right, so there you have it. That is how you create three different types of drag and drop activities inside of Google Slides. And like I said, we have covered a lot about Google Slides here on this channel, but I'm still always getting questions about it and teachers wanting to know more of what they can do. So I would love to hear from you guys. If there is anything that we haven't covered here on this channel about using Google Slides that you would like to know or learn more about, please leave a comment below and let me know. I want to make sure that the videos that we're creating here on this channel are really helping you, um, whether you're teaching in a classroom or you're teaching remotely. So make sure to leave a comment and let me know. And then last but not least, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps this channel to grow. It also helps us to reach as many teachers as possible with this content. And it also helps you because it lets you know when we release our newest videos and teaching tips and ideas. And so until next time, happy teaching.